Hai Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh So today we are going to learn another physics topic which is quantum physics So uh, in this topic you are going to learn about black body radiation and plus hypothesis of quantum energy Photons and the photoelectric effects, photon scattering and Compton's effects The dual nature of light and matter and the mass and momentum of a photon We are still using the current textbook, so we will College Physics 11th edition So these are the learning outcomes for this session You may refer it to uh, the lesson uh, to the lecture notes that has been given to you earlier So the first topic for this session is uh, Black Body Radiation and Planck's Hypothesis of Quantized Energy so this is the model of black body radiation okay this is the model of the black body radiation uh, light entering a black body is completely absorbed so this is the light that is uh, entering the black body and it for an ideal black body it will be totally absorbed the light will never go out again an ideal black body absorbs all the light that is incident upon it okay uh, this is the Weyer's displacement law uh, that states uh, that the black body radiation curve for different temperatures will peak at different deep wavelengths that are inversely proportional to the temperature if you can see here this is the graph of intensity versus wavelength uh, if you can see for the different temperature the intensity the intensity of the light uh, reach different uh, peak uh, for different wavelength uh, if you can see here for uh, 2000 kelvin the peak will be between 1 to 2 micrometer of wavelength and for 3000 kelvin the peak will be between 0 to 1 actually nearer to 1 uh, micrometer of wavelength um, and then uh, for 4000 Kelvin uh, the intensity will be peak uh, between 0 to 1 okay and then it is uh, nearer to 0 compared to 3000 Kelvin so the point here is um, the temperature will peak at different wavelength uh, and then that, it, that are inversely proportional to the temperature okay um, for classical predictions uh, classical predictions were that the intensity increased rapidly with uh, frequency hence the ultraviolet catastrophe will happen so if you can see here the relative intensity versus frequency uh, by using classical prediction the frequency when frequency increase the relative intensity will increase uh, and towards the infinity towards the infinity so it will not go down but from the experiment observation and plans prediction uh, when frequency uh, increase the relative intensity will increase until certain point and then we will go back again uh, and then you will go uh, down until zero so this is the Planck's uh, re resolution Planck's hypothesized that the black body radiation was produced by resonator resonators were sub, sub microscopic charge oscillators Planck discovered that he could reproduce the experiment curve by assuming that the radiation in a black body came in quantized energy packets depending on the frequency. The fact that energy can assume only certain discrete values is the single most important difference between quantum and classical theories. Classically, the energy can be in any one of uh, a continuum values. If you can see here, this uh, equation shows the quantized energy E equals to NHF 
where n equals to 0, 1, 2, 3. n is actually the integer number 0, 1, 2, 3. h is actually the Planck's constant, uh, which is uh, 6.63 .6 times 10 to the power of negative 34 joule second. And then f is the frequency. Okay. So we move to the second topic which is photons and the photoelectric effects. Okay, when light is incident on certain metallic surface, uh, electrons are emitted from the surface. This is called the photoelectric effects. The emitted electrons are called photoelectrons. If you can see here, this is uh, the experiment by uh, Einstein. Uh, the light shines uh, and it hits the metal plate and uh, the electron will be ejected to the photo to the collector and then uh, it will result the electric current so I will show you uh, a video to explain about this phenomena later so um, this is the graphical explanation for the photoelectric effects when light uh, hits the uh, surface of a metal the electron will be ejected okay you may refer it to your lecture notes the photoelectric effects occurs when a beam of light strikes a metal and electrons are ejected uh, each metal has a minimum amount of energy required to eject an electron called the work function work function is actually not a work, it is an energy. It is an energy required to eject an electron. If electron is given an energy E by the beam of light, its maximum kinetic energy is uh, Ke max. Ke is kinetic energy maximum. So this is the value, uh, the conversion value for electron volt and joule because energy can be measured in. Uh, many kind of units so for this purpose usually uh, people are using electron volt rather than joule so these are the uh, equivalence between electron volt and joule one electron volt equals to 1.6 times 10 to, 10 to the power of negative 1 9 joule so I will show you uh, one uh, video about photoelectric effects uh, that, has been, that has been made by myself so this uh, is the metal okay, any kind of metal uh, the metal has the work function which is equal to HFC C is actually cut off the minimum amount of frequency and the minimum amount of uh, lambda before the electron can be ejected so the photon energy equals to EP uh, equals to HF equals to HC over lambda okay HF equals to HC over lambda because C equals to lambda F if you still remember so this is the lambda uh, the light the photon that is hitting the metal and of course the energy uh, must be measured in joule or electron volt if uh, we want to use joule everything must uh, be using joule if we want to use electron volt everything must be using electron volt so at the metal surface there are electrons and then if the uh, energy of the photon is greater than the work function the electron will be ejected uh, with a certain velocity so the electron will uh, have a certain velocity uh, the maximum velocity actually 
and then of course the electron has a mass the mass of an electron you can find it uh, at the back of your calculator cover the value of the um, electron's mass and then the full equation is uh, kinetic energy maximum equals to half uh, the mass of electron times uh, the velocity uh, max square of the electron and then from here you can write the full equation for photoelectric effects which is uh, Ke max maximum kinetic energy equals to energy of photon minus the work function remember work function is actually the minimum energy required to eject the electron from the metal surface equals to hc over lambda minus hc over lambda c c actually the cut off um, wavelength okay or hf minus hfc cut off frequency translated from um, c equals to fc times lambda c okay so the unit as i mentioned before uh, you can use a uh, joule or electron volt so if you want to use joule stick with joule if you are, if you want to use electron volt stick with electron volt for all the calculation involved so from uh, the experiment we can observe uh, one or two things the first of observation is the light must have a minimum uh, have a certain minimum frequency or cut off frequency H, uh, FC in order to eject electrons each photon's energy is determined by its frequency if it is less than the work function electron will be not uh, ejected no matter how intense the beam so the minimum condition is E equals to uh, work function so in order to in order for the electron to be ejected, E must be greater than the work function. Okay, so uh, this equation has been uh, explained before. Uh, for lambda, uh, the, the cut of lambda is uh, cut, off, cut off lambda equals to HC over um, work function. okay so the second observation is higher intensity means more photons and only results in more ejected electrons of the same energy energy is independent of intensity but depends on the frequency okay uh, if you can see uh, on this graph maximum and kinetic energy versus you can see for two different uh, materials sodium and gold uh, it has uh, they have uh, the same uh, slope okay um, but different cut off frequency gold has has a higher uh, cut off frequency here and then sodium has a lower cut off fre frequency so in order to uh, inject an electron sodium require less energy because uh, the cut off frequency is lower but for gold it requires uh, higher energy because the cut off frequency is higher compared to sodium and then uh, for more understanding if you can see uh, this model for low intensity light beam and high intensity light beam each photon actually carry uh, the same energy okay um, for low intensity light beam it has less photon okay but for high intensity uh, light beam it has more photon 
but each photon carry the same energy so that the top even though uh, this represent low intensity and then this uh, represent high intensity they carry the same energy because each photon carry the same energy with the same frequency with the same wavelength okay so the application of photoelectric effects um, photocell photocell is photocells are an application of the photoelectric effects when light of sufficiently high frequency falls on the on the cell a current is produced example of the application is you can see it on the street lights garage door openers elevators okay this is the component of the photocell and then uh, we usually use uh, the photocell um, in the street lights okay so we move to the next topic photon scattering and Compton effects Compton experiment Compton directed a beam of x-ray toward a block of graphite we found that the scattered X-rays had a slightly longer wavelength that the incident that than the incident X-rays. This means they also had less energy. The amount of energy reduction depend depended on the angle at which the X-ray was scattered. The change in wavelength is called the Compton shift. Compton assumed that the photons acted like other particles in collision energy and momentum will conserve so uh, if you can see here the diagram um, this is the incoming light this is the electron this is the scattered light this is the scattered uh, electron the scattered light or the scattered photon uh, having loss energy has a longer wavelength and lower frequency than the incident photon and then uh, the electron recoils uh, just as if struck by a classical particle so um, the shift in wavelength is given by this equation the uh, delta lambda the change of lambda equals to lambda minus incident lambda okay uh, wavelength minus the incident wavelength equals to h Planck constant divided by uh, mass of electron times the speed of light times 1 minus cos theta the quantity h per uh, mass of electron times uh, Speed of light is called the Compton wavelength. Compton wavelength equals to 0.00243 nanometer, very small compared to visible light. The Compton shift depends on the scattering angle and not on the wavelength. If you can see here uh, from the equation, okay, the Compton shift delta lambda is only depend on the theta the angle and not on the wavelength actually because in this equation um, there is no uh, wavelength parameter it's only constant h is constant m is constant c is constant one is a number okay and then the only thing the only parameter that change is actually the angle the theta okay next topic uh, 3.4 3.3.1.4 the dual nature of light and matter light has a dual nature it exhibits both wave and particle characteristics applies to all magnetic electromagnetic radiation different frequencies allow one or the other characteristic to be more easily observed the photoelectric effects and Compton scattering offer evidence for the particle nature of light or photon when light and matter interact, light behaves as if it were composed of particles. Interference and different interference and diffraction of evidence of the wave nature of light. 
uh, electromagnetic wave. So the last topic for this session is actually the mass and momentum of a photon with properties of life. Okay, in 1924. Louis de Broglie postulated that because photons have wave and particle characteristics, perhaps all forms of matter have both properties. Furthermore, the frequency and wavelength of matter wave can be determined. So, the de Broglie wavelength of a particle is given by this equation. Lambda equals to Planck constant divided by momentum equals to h over mv uh, and then the frequency of matter wave is f equals to e over h e is the energy divided by the plane constant okay um, this uh, idea by de Broglie is to show that the particle for example an electron has uh, the behavior of a wave that's why a particle electron can from electron we can calculate uh, the wavelength of an electron okay before before this uh, Einstein proposed the photoelectric effects to show that um, a, a, a light uh, has uh, particle nature okay uh, light should be a wave but uh, Einstein want to show it to uh, had to show it that uh, to show Einstein want to show the uh, light has the, the behavior and can act like a, a particle and then here, the Broglie want to show that a particle, an electron, has the characteristic and behave like a wave. That's why from uh, the equation, uh, the Broglie give the wavelength for a particle. For in this case, he use uh, an electron. Okay. So uh, I think. Uh, this is the last uh, slide for this session okay uh, for uh, detailed explanation you may refer to uh, your textbook and then uh, the lecture notes has, that has been given earlier okay thank you